year marks the 30th anniversary of China's participation in UN peacekeeping operations. In those years, some 40,000 Chinese peacekeepers have been dispatched to conflict affected areas in 25 UN peace operations. So, what are the difficulties of carrying out their missions overseas? How have Chinese peacekeepers been deployed? And in the larger view, how has China contributed to the world's peacekeeping work? To discuss these issues, I'm pleased to be joined by He Yin, Associate Professor from the China Peacekeeping Police Training Center at the People's Police University of China, and Senior Colonel Zhang Gang from the directing staff of the International College of Defense Study at National Defense University. And later on, Pavel Fagenhauer, Russian defense analyst, and that's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhou Yun. So today's topic is China's uh, UN peacekeeping efforts. Senior Colonel, uh, would you please give us a rough idea of China's peacekeeping missions over the past 30 years? Uh, first, I want to say that uh, China began its uh, peacekeeping operation as a late comer in 1990. That's just 42 years later than the first UN peacekeeping mission. But since then, China has evolved from a late comer to become an active particip participant and important contributor to UN peacekeeping operations. And to sum up the history of China's military operation, uh, peacekeeping operation in UN, uh, we can divide it into three phases. Mm -hmm. So the first phase is from non-participation to limited participation. The second phase, I would say, is expanded participation. And the first phase is full or comprehensive participation of China's military force. And does it have anything to do with the changing military strength of our PLA or the changing strategy of China in terms of peacekeeping around the world? Of course, it has uh, its co uh, connections with that. Because um, in the uh, last uh, 30 years, uh, we have seen witness uh, continuous growth of China's power. Uh, but also, it is 30 years of China's co-evolution with the world. Uh, the change of China's attitude to peacekeeping uh, is also a perception, a change of its perception of the trend of the times the international system and its own responsibilities. Mm. And, and Professor, what do you think of the police involvement? Because obviously the peacekeepers uh, as police forces came later. Uh, what are the difficulties of peacekeepers, especially the police force, overseas? Yes, uh, China, Chinese police participation in UN peacekeeping operations uh, dates back uh, to January uh, uh, 2000. Uh, we, uh, in, in that year, 20 we, years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago, we dispatched uh, 15 police officers to the United Nations uh, Transitional Administration in East Timor. And uh, for the past uh, uh, 20 years, uh, our uh, police officers have encountered a lot of difficulties, uh, including disease, uh, uh, threats to uh, safety and security, and uh, other threats as well. And have they been adapting to their new roles? Because obviously it's different than their missions here at home. Uh, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, we were a uh, learner. Uh, we were eager to learn. But today, uh, we have learned a lot. We are uh, becoming more and more experienced. Yeah, we are a trainer. We are a teacher. Uh, mm. we, are, uh, we are a contributor uh, today, yes. And, of course, China's uh, strategy in the UN peacekeeping has been evolving. Uh, we hadn't participated in UN peacekeeping in 1990s. And since then, we have, as you explained, we have taken full part in the endeavor. So why, why there is a change from no participation to full participation? This sounded like a 100-degree turn. So just mentioned that uh, it's the reflect, uh, reflection of China's perception of the trend of the world, the international system, and its responsibilities. Can, can you be more specific? What is the consideration back then, and what is about now? The first one I want to say is that the, the perception of the, the trend of the times after the Cold War, and China's perception of the world is changing. Because um, uh, the trend 
of peace, development, and cooperation has become more prominent. So China firmly supports the UN-centered inter international system mm. and also support the international community to take military-related actions to maintain peace of the world. So previously, China think that uh, uh, peacekeeping is uh, a means by superpowers uh -huh. to interfere into the uh, internal uh, state, uh, internal affairs of another country or to suppress the liberation movement of other nations. But after that, China think that uh, peacekeeping is an effective, the effective means to maintain world peace. Mm. It's also an important approach to promote uh, multilateralism and also to contribute to collective security in the world. And, and Pavel, I want your take on this. As a senior colonel just explained, China's role in peacekeeping has been evolving over the past three decades. Uh, so what, what is your thoughts about China's uh, willingness and capabilities in this area? Uh, well, of course, um, Russia fully supports uh, uh, legal UN actions, uh, which has been authorized by the Security Council. And uh, Russia does not has, has excellent relations with China and no strategic uh, differences and uh, Russia and China jointly coordinate to a large extent their foreign policies and their political position in the UN. So Russia has no um, problems with uh, uh, Chinese participation in peacekeeping. And of course, it's also uh, well established that with power comes responsibility. Uh, power without responsibility is very dangerous, as we can now see on the example of the President Donald Trump America. So uh, this is a kind of win-win situation for everyone. The China is taking its part of the burden and participating in these operations, as Russia also to some extent does participate, uh, though not uh, maybe at the we lesser level than, the, than China, but does participate in UN peacekeeping operations and fully supports them. And the strategic reading of China is also being reiterated this time uh, because China recently released uh, its white paper called China's Armed Forces, 30 Years of UN Peacekeeping Operations on the Participation of the Armed Forces in UN Peacekeeping Operations. Uh, so, Senior Colonel, uh, why they need to publish a white paper on the efforts and what is the main message of the document? I think the first message uh, is to, uh, to explain to the world the, the peacekeeping policies of China in the new year. And the second message, I think, is to summarize our efforts, summarize Chinese contribution to UN peacekeeping operations in the last 30 years, to honor, to honor those who have sacrificed for peacekeeping operations. And the third, third one, I think, is to uh, uh, emphasize the importance of international cooperation with other partners in the world, because mm. no one can have security without the in, uh, cooperation with each other. And the, 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 the next one is to present the efforts we have in the last five years to fulfill our pledges that the President Xi has set at the uh, UN Peacekeeping Summit in 2015. And the last message, I think, is to uh, put forward our initiative for future efforts in peacekeeping operations. Uh, you talk about international cooperation, of mm -hmm. course, for the Chinese armed forces. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not uh, the usual case that we will fight shoulder to shoulder with other uh, servicemen from other countries. Uh, how difficult is that? And did they uh, adjust well to this kind of scenarios? Yes, I think, uh, generally speaking, China, Chinese soldiers, Chinese peacekeeping, peacekeepers are doing well with our counterparts from uh, other countries because uh, um, the Chinese peacekeepers have a good reputation in the world. We are disciplined soldiers, we work hard, and uh, we are professional uh, soldiers. And, uh, but of course we have some challenges, uh, the, the culture difference, 
the language difference, but we are learning quickly. We are mm -hmm. adjusting quickly to that. And also about the cost. Of course, uh, people are saying why China should send the most uh, numbers of peacekeepers uh, among all nations uh, for the peacekeeping efforts. And also, we have seen casualties from the Chinese servicemen. I is it worth it? Why we need to make contributions like that? What do you say? See, from the, the, the defense, uh, uh, the def uh, China's defense in the new era, we have put the uh, promotion of world peace and uh, common development as one of the missions of POA. So that's one of our key missions. Mm. Uh, which we not just say about the promotion of world peace. We want to put our words into actions. So that's why we send our troops thousands away to Africa, to other countries, to fulfill, to fulfill that uh, commitment. Mm. So, of course, we have to pay, the, uh, pay for that. Um, but uh, and sometimes with lives. Uh, sometimes yes. with lives, but. Uh, that's of course we have to pay because uh, mm. uh, peace has to, to be earned. You have to pay for the sacrifice mm. for, for that. But there are also accusations uh, pointing China joining those peacekeeping operations in oil rich countries, especially in Africa, to safeguard our national interests, energy needs, and resources exploitations. Uh, what do you think of those accusations? Do you think they're fair? My answer to that is yes and no. Yes, when I say yes, because I think uh, China joint peacekeeping operations is for a safer and a prosper, prosper world. We have a safer, prosper world that will create uh, conditions for win-win cooperation with the other parts, with other countries of the world. So that's for the benefits of China. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would also say no, because the Chinese government have said that we don't have private interest in UN peacekeeping operations. Uh, those, ones say those, those ones say that, I think, they don't understand the operation of uh, UN peacekeeping operations. Because mm -hmm. um, the command of control of peacekeeping troops are in the hands of New York, New York headquarters, in the hands of mission headquarters and the sector headquarters. Mm. The Chinese government cannot to deploy the peacekeepers to safeguard China's energy interests in those areas. So it is a misunderstanding to judge those efforts as anything other than humanitarian needs. So if it's for China's interests, so why other countries don't send their more troops to participate in in the UN peacekeeping operations. Yes, I, I have also yeah, heard Professor accusations Hall. like that. Yes, that's a really a very old story. Yeah, when we come to Africa, you, you can see yeah, it's true that uh, nowadays we have uh, uh, more than a little more than uh, 2,500 peacekeepers working abroad. And 80% of Chinese peacekeepers are in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's also true that 85% of all the 80,000 peacekeepers, they are in Africa. Mm. So it's not strange that most Chinese peacekeepers are in Africa. We want to contribute peacekeepers to peacekeeping missions. Where should we go? If we don't go to Africa, we go to Middle East. If we go to Middle East, some people will say, you see, Chinese, they send so many peacekeepers to Middle East. What do they want to do? Mm. Yes. But in the first place, Africa is a continent that is still strived with uh, security problems, yes. humanitarian crises, and that's why the UN needs its presence there. Yes. And, and another fact is that uh, the number of Chinese peacekeepers in Africa is larger than the 32 industrialized states combined. This does not mean Western powers, Western countries, they are not interested in protecting their rights, their in interests in Africa. Mm. They do it unilaterally, bilaterally. They have so many yeah, uh, military bases because they know that within the multilateral framework of peacekeeping, they cannot protect their overseas interests directly. And another thing to evaluate uh, whether <coughs> their work is worth it is, uh, have they received popular support or consent and uh, agreement from the local community? Uh, what, what about the local people say about the peacekeeping efforts and seeing Chinese peacekeeping efforts doing things on their ground? 
Uh, I would say that, um, generally speaking, the Chinese peacekeepers are welcomed by the local peoples because um, the, the, the Chinese are also developing countries. We have similar experience with uh, those host countries. We all, in our history, all, we also faced uh, foreign invasions and also uh, um, internal turmoil see, uh -huh. in our countries. And More the, sympathetic towards the local populace yes, in a way. And, yes, and also we, uh, the Chinese people have the merits of uh, dedication and uh, resilience and the discipline. We are disciplined officers. We are all, always welcomed by the local people and uh, we are recognized by the authorities from New York and also from the mission headquarters and uh, sector hall headquarters. Mm. Yeah, the police officers are probably an even better example because you are on the streets and working with the local people and also police officers. Yes, what our guys. Learned? Yes, our guys. Ha they have more interaction with local communities. Ah. Yes, in State Timor, uh, uh, my students, my uh, Chinese peacekeeper, uh, police uh, peacekeepers, they help uh, mediate neighborhood conflicts uh, 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 on. Uh, conflicts on land, coffee land, and marriage. Mm. And uh, in Haiti, our uh, peacekeepers, those girls, they smile at the local miserable people. Mm. They, 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 told, they told me, Mr. Ho, we, we can't give them more. We, we can only yeah, smile at them. Mm. And one of my students, his name is Sun Dongxin, he's deployed to uh, uh, Sudan. Yes, uh, now it's South Sudan, yes, that, that part. And he saw the local uh, station uh, uh, very shabby, was very shabby. He donated a lot of money to help rebuild the station. The local government, the local people named the, the police station after his name. Yeah, the, the, the police station is, name is Dongxun Police Station. So, so the local police Africa, station got yes, a Chinese name. Chinese name, yes. The, the uh, high-ranking UN official said this is not merely the name of Chinese officer. It's the name of the United Nations, yes. All right, uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be coming back talking about China's peacekeeping missions under the framework of UN. Don't go away, we'll be right back. And Professor, obviously, obviously the peacekeeping efforts have also got the approval from the highest authority here in China. On September the 28th, uh, 2015, Chinese president attended the UN peacekeeping summit and announced six commitments to support UN peacekeeping operations. Uh, my question is, uh, have those commitments been fulfilled? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, 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 as far as I know, all the six commitment, commitments have been fully implemented. Uh, take the Chinese uh, uh, police side, for example. Uh, we have helped train, we have trained uh, more than 1,000 police officers from abroad, from other countries, especially from developing countries. And we have uh, established uh, the uh, peacekeeping standby police unit. And uh, recently the government has announced that we are going to deploy our uh, standby peacekeeping police unit to Africa, mm. uh, African mission, yes. Yes. And Pavel, I, I want to ask you, without the consent of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, actually the UN cannot send peacekeepers to any country or region. But uh, that doesn't mean those parts of the world do not have problems, for example, Syria. So wh what do you think the UN's role in peacekeeping efforts are still lacking in terms of coverage and the extent of their involvement? Well, originally, after the, the Second World War, the UN was established as a basically peace enforcement agency. It was envisaged, there is still, uh, was created and still exists the military staff committee, uh, but though right now it's mothballed, it's not doing much at all because uh, uh, peace enforcement operations are long since been abandoned, and now it's just. Uh, uh, classical peacekeeping, by uh, white uh, jeep peacekeeping, meaning that the UN peacekeepers are not involved, in, though they're military personnel, uh, they're not involved in any real military action. They can only use weapons for self-defense, uh, and actually not always use them even for self-defense, try to get avoid any kind of involvement in any military action. Uh, this means and uh, the UN on itself cannot impose a peace. It can, if the parties 
of, of a conflict uh, decide that they want to, uh, to stop hostilities. The UN can be there to observe and report. And in Syria, actually, there are UN uh, personnel. There's there this long-established uh, 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 Golan Heights mission, established uh, in the 70s. Uh, there, actually, some peacekeepers were taken hostage by the warring factions in the uh, civil war. Uh, then they were uh, uh, released uh, through negotiation. Right now, Russian military police is helping the UN peacekeepers to reestablish the Golan Heights mission. Of course, the Russian military police is under a different mandate mm. of uh, uh, rules of engagement, uh, the, and they can actually use weapons, unlike the UN peacekeepers. So the, uh, the presence or non-presence of UN peacekeepers is an important factor, but it does not really decide the, uh, this make the real decisions of uh, peace or war. They are there to just report to the international community, basically, uh, suppresses there any kind of maybe criminal action, I mean, the UN police missions. China's been sending more, so far 2,500 peacekeepers serving in UN peacekeeping missions, and some people are pointing fingers at China saying that it is expanding its influence by using the UN framework. What, what do you think? Well, uh, the peacekeeping operations, they help establish, of course, relationships in the place where you are deployed. And that can be important further on uh, for promoting national interest to some extent. But again, these are not really military deployments uh, per se. Uh, the, it's not only blue helmets, it's also white jeeps, maybe some white armor, uh, basically hand weapons or some machine guns. It's not a military force to uh, really establish a uh, uh, military presence. Of course, there was the exceptions like the uh, Korean War where the Americans and their allies were under the UN flag, uh, which has been, of course, withdrawn in 67. Uh, but such missions are like the missions, uh, no, the uh, peace enforcement mission in the Congo in the 60s, they have been right now banished and they are not being uh, there is sometimes talk that they may be re reinstated, but that's not really practical. So this is not really a vehicle to establish military uh, dominance in any kind of region. And uh, uh, China participating is just taking up part of the effort to keep uh, the peace in uh, troubled places of the world, and that is very commendable. Uh, that is commendable, but what does China get from uh, this effort is is often uh, cast into sh into doubts by many Western critics. So, Professor He, uh, do you think the UN peacekeeping efforts uh, will necessarily empower China's uh, global influence, and and should it be a vehicle to help change political system or even security situation on the ground? I, uh, yes, before answering uh, uh, your question, I would like to clarify one thing. Uh, the U.S. A uh, action in, uh, under the flag of so-called uh, so under the flag of the uh, United Nations flag, okay, in the 1950s, it's not a United Nations peacekeeping operation, okay. That, that's it has a war in yeah, the name of the war. U.N. Yeah, yes. And we come back to uh, the, uh, the China, so-called China's influence, trying to influence the U.N. peacekeeping. I think that's quite absurd. Uh, you know, the more China uh, is doing for uh, world peace, uh, is uh, uh, engaging uh, in the international affairs, uh, the more uh, skepticism attract. It's very strange. Mm. Yes, this pu uh, uh, place China in a uh, uh, damn it, you do, uh, you do a damn it if you don't. Yes, <laughs> we don't know what we should do. Yes, do, if do we you don't. Think, do you think the blame come from uh, their identification with the purpose or the capabilities of China? Uh, I, I don't think those people, they, they understand uh, peacekeeping, they understand China's intention, they understand... Can, can you tell us what's China's intention? China's intention is to share the uh, dividends of peaceful development with the rest of the world.
But that, that's way. just altruistic yes. purposes, which are many people in the West don't believe in. Yes, we, we have our purpose, yes. We can say, okay, so-called purpose. That is, our peaceful uh, development, we need a, a, a peaceful environment. Otherwise, our peaceful uh, development cannot be uh, achieved because now even uh, in a very remote corner, uh, there is a, a conflict there. We can feel here in China, in Beijing, we can feel the impact of it. So, uh, I just want to add one thing, because um, we know the aim of peacekeeping is not to, to, to combat. It's not as the Bible has just said. It's not to, to, to have a war. The, the mission of the peacekeeping is to for the prevention of the conflict. It's also for the political to create conditions for the political political solution of the conflict on the ground. So China's increasing support of UN peacekeeping operations is just our commitment to the settlement of dispute mm -hmm. in peaceful means in the world. And, and because of the lesser, less and less commitments from the United States, uh, the UN is facing budget and organizational challenges uh, down the road. That will probably have impact on its uh, peacekeeping missions. So what, what is your reading of the outlook? Yes, yes. Uh, you, you, we can see in recent years uh, that some Western powers, especially the United States, their support for UN peacekeeping is reducing, uh, it, 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 it is declining. So now China is coming up. China gives more support for UN. Without China's support, I think the UN peacekeeping could have encountered more difficulties. So are you saying that China will make up for the loss because of the United States retrenchment? No, we no, 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 not for that purpose. Uh, we, we don't care about uh, how much they uh, contribute, okay? We just contribute according to our willingness. We want to do for UN, just like uh, President Xi, uh, uh, yeah, uh, a few days ago, uh, in a speech, he, he delivered a speech in the uh, 75th uh, session of the General Assembly. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, he sends a very clear uh, signal to the world that China will continue to support the United Nations, including peacekeeping. And what is your view of your fellow officers and soldiers doing their work uh, in different parts of conflict areas? Yes, uh, <coughs> I think that um, the, the, the cut of budget uh, from the U.S. side uh, obviously have an uh, impact on, on the peacekeeping operations on the ground. Um, that means obviously China will shoulder more burden financially and yes. logistically. Yes, China is doing that because um, if you see the budget, the contribution of the budget of China, I remember that in, in 1998, China's share of uh, UN peacekeeping budget is 0.9%. Uh, and in 2016, that number has increased to 10.2%. Mm. And the second uh, budget contributed to peacekeeping operations. And in 2019, that figure has come to a historic, historic high of 15.2%. 15, 15 so China is doing our best to contribute to the peacekeeping operations in the world. All right. Uh, on that note, we have to wrap up. Thank you very much, Senior Colonel. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. And thank you, Pavel. And you've been watching Dialogue here on CGTN. I'm Zhou in Beijing. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.